Are you designing a business that actually lets you have the life that you want to have? It can be very easy to fall into the trap of making your business look like what people are telling you to make out there, what they think is a successful version of business that you're probably feeling exhausted trying to reach those metrics of success. So this video, I really want to help you and encourage you to take a necessary pause to take a look at what you're designing in your work and your business and what is non-negotiable in the way that you want to live your life. So we can make sure that your business design and the way that you work are is in alignment with your values. And the bigger part is giving you the life that you actually really want to have. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hey, I'm Lydia and I'm the freedom instigator and the work reinvention coach at Screw the Cubicle. And what makes my heart sing is helping humans like you to start a self-employment pathway to work for themselves and to work with passionate individuals that are launching their next big thing. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I hope you subscribe and get notified from whenever I produce a new video here and be part of the Cubicle Crashing family. Uh, and if you found today's video helpful, please don't forget to share it as well. So today, as I mentioned, I wanna talk a little bit about defining your own metrics of success in the business that you wanna build, but also really knowing what it is that you wanna design in your business that's actually gonna be bring you pleasure and joy in the way that you do your work and how you want to earn a living. Now, as a new entrepreneur, maybe you're someone that's just starting out uh, for the first time, or maybe you are someone who are been in business for a while, but the way you're working and the way that you're conducting your business isn't bringing you the life choices or the, the time or the flexibility or whatever it is that isn't working out for you today. Um, I know how that feels like because um, late last year, I revealed that I was going through six months of a burnout because I have completely overworked myself trying to maintain my six, my six figure business and really listening too much externally to what people were telling me I had to do to grow my business. And I ended up actually spending so much money and losing so much time to um, comparing myself to other people's model of success rather than really thinking more deeply into what I'm building and what kind of life I really want to have with the work that I want to do. So I won't bore you with all the details about my burnout, but let's just say that I now realize that I didn't need to spend the money that I need to spend to grow. And I had to kind of redefine my own version of success in my work in order not to be distracted by other people's version of advice or whatever it is that people say, traditionally, here's how you grow and here's how you scale. Okay. Um, it's, it's myself included. Like I said, it's not easy to put the horse blinders on because when we're on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, looking at the, at the world wide web online and looking at great businesses and inspirational influencers out there, um, it's great to feel inspired by people a lot of the times, but it can also be very, very, um, non um, helpful when we're comparing ourselves and making ourselves fit into what we think we have to achieve when we look at other people's lives, right? Or the way that they do business. Um, we're being sold a particular version of success, right? You, you see it in the Facebook ads, you see it in, um, everything that whenever there's success stories, everything is like six figure businesses in six months, or, you know, you have to have this number of following of people to look successful or, you know, appear credible. Uh, but some of the most successful people that are really happy with their lives that have built a really heartfelt aligned business that they love are people that are not out there really shouting it from the rooftops. They're actually just living their lives. They're not on social media every day. They're not on you know writing blogs every single day they're doing good work but they're doing work in a way that makes sense for their personality their natural abilities how much they want to earn and the time that they want to spend on their lives so if you've been sort of um you know, thinking about, I don't actually know what my version of success looks like. I've been too busy comparing my business or my life to other people's. Um, I will make sure that I link up a video for you. That's probably on top of this video here. Uh, that is one of my previous videos from a couple of videos ago on how to define your personal version of success in healthier 
metrics. So I recommend that you take a look at that video after this one, as it's a great partnership to really um, do the work with yourself right now and take that pause to reflect on what you're, what, what are you really building and what ingredients of success is really needed in the way that you want to work. So, um, when, what you'll need to think about at this point, you know, of your work is that how are you designing the type of business that you feel joyful to run? So for example, I work a lot with introverts, uh, that don't want to just go out there and market their business in the way that you see how regular brands might market themselves. And when they're forced to do that, when they're forced to go on live streams or, you know, do something very non introverted, they just want to hide under the bed. Like, I don't know if any introverts are listening right now, but that's not the style and the approach that really works for someone like that. Um, introverts are also people that love doing a lot more intimate relationship activities. They like to work one-on-one. -on -one. They like to work in small groups or small teams. They're not these sort of sometimes these big, big brands that you see out there that are really famous and popular, which represents one type of a business or one type of a brand, right? And not everyone fits there. Um, this is also what I teach in my work reinvented course. This is by the way, a course, uh, that is specifically designed to help people understand what kind of independent career they're really building based on their personality, their natural abilities, their skill sets, and their gifts so that you're not building a business just like everyone else. You're building a business that's aligned with you, right? How you want to work, how you want to live your life. So make sure to check that out. If that's something I can guide you towards. Uh, but in that course, one of the biggest things that we talk about is thinking a lot about your natural style of working that feels most productive, that feels like it's the most genuine and authentic way for you to work with people. So this will affect the model of your work. So for example, I'm someone that loves to coach one-on-one. -on -one. I know that my deepest work and my highest contribution to my work and purpose is when I get to sit down with one person and work out their business and their life design and what it is that they want to build in that intimate setting. Now it's not to say that I don't like group programs and I don't like retreats. I have those programs as well as well, but my primary best work that I know I enjoy the most and I know that creates the most impact for my clients are usually on a one-on-one -on -one level. And so when I made my primary model of work last year and the year before to be really about big courses, you know, and larger groups, I lost my sense of passion. I lost my sense of deep interest and to be honest, creative control over how I wanted to help. And I got a lot more disengaged from the work that I do. So that's the first thing is thinking about your style of work that really suits your, your personality and your style to determine the model of business you're really building. So maybe your business shouldn't be a big ass business. Maybe it's a consulting agency kind of model. It's maybe a freelancing model. Maybe it's, you know, uh, someone that's more of a solopreneur like I do, like I built a bigger team two years ago and to be honest, after learning what I learned about myself and what caused me joy, I actually decided that I don't work well with managing people. Um, so my version of success is not managing people, it's higher, hiring higher level people to work with. Like I like working with people, but I don't want to pay a salary. I don't want to be in charge of someone's livelihood. I want to actually, I don't want to, I don't want to mentor other people in my team. I will coach for a living, but I don't want to manage a team. I like how flexible my lifestyle is to be able to travel from my home base in Bali to, you know, four to five countries a year is really hard to manage a team. So I don't necessarily need to build a big business in order to feel successful or be successful. Um, and because of the deep dives that I like to do in my work, very likely, um, the services that I offer are much more intimate. They're more hands-on, which means that I don't need as many clients because my prices and my packages are to serve those kinds of clientele that lets me do my work best and they get the best of me and they pay higher prices to work in such intimacy um, with me, right? But if you're someone that loves to teach the masses, then maybe a, more courses and teaching models are for you. Whatever your version is, is really, really good to think about what you're offering right now in your business. What doesn't bring you joy to facilitate or conduct or share? 
And what has been your most effective way, like where you feel that work is so easy, where it's your zone of genius, where it's your natural, most best way to help, right? And you can own, you can very much pick one service, one offer that you do really good in without feeling that pressure of needing to scale and grow your business constantly. Now, this was kind of a realization for me when I had my burnout in late 2018 was that I was busy trying to grow my business, hire more people, more, have more customers, you know, build automated programs because that's what they tell you to do when you want to scale your time is to go and make some passive income. And yeah, there are some truth to not relying on one source of income, you know, to make your money, but it's also true that your primary offer and your primary services in your business should reflect your best way of working. And so once I decided to actually stay small strategically, to hire great people based on project-based agreements rather than full-time staff, okay, I saved a lot more money, I get to keep a lot more of my money, and I got to do the work that I want to do without this pressure of needing someone to replace me or, you know, how I can sit in the back and just get, you know, watch my courses, make me money on the side. Like I wanted to get involved with my work and the best way I could do that is the one-on-one. And that really adjusted the way that I took that pressure off, off my perfectionist self and actually just do business in a way that feels right for me. The second realization that I um, found out and dating an accountant is a good thing where I did, you know, my partner, Andrew is really good with money. And when he saw me sort of, you know, hustling to keep maintaining my six figure income, right. To feel successful, right. Year after year, he questioned me on this and he said, how much money do you really need to live the life that you have? And I said, well, I think it's somewhere between 70,000 to hundred grand a year. Uh, Cause that's sort of my goals, right? Every single year. And he said, have you actually calculated how much you spend on your travels, on your home base in Bali, on visiting your family in Vancouver, like all the things that you do in your work and your life, how much does it really cost? So when we actually sat down and did that costing, it was only about thirty-five to forty thousand dollars Canadian a year in order to afford the lifestyle that I had, and that's me globe trotting, right, to like four countries a year. So it can be shocking sometimes when you realize that the version of success that you might have for yourself, like so for me, you know, if I just made fifty grand a year and and just work, you know, a quarter of what I work right now, I could be happy. I could actually have more time. And there's sometimes this other asset of you know, other values, right? And, and, and benefits that we don't, we forget are important to us, like time, um, the ability to not work certain parts of the year, um, the need to want to be with our kids or our loved ones and spend more time with them rather than working eight hour days, that more money doesn't always mean more happiness. And so your version of success could be very different from a big blockbuster million dollar business or even a six figure business. And maybe you don't need to make six figures to be happy. Maybe you can actually have a really realis realistic and, and, and practical money goal for yourself that's in conjunction with the lifestyle that you want to have. And especially if you're a minimalist, you're someone that isn't going on a shopping spree every week, like life could actually be quite inexpensive. It could be very affordable. So you can stop going on the hustle train and get off that train and start actually having a much more authentic look at making money, right? Rather than um, feeling that pressure of making more and more and more every single time, because it's just never enough. So as you think about your version of success, as I mentioned, think about the style of work that brings you joy, that makes you feel good about making money. I think that's super important to measure that for yourself and to know that you're doing that in your business. And the second thing is how much money do you really need to make in the lifestyle that you, you want to have? And so for me, I want more time. And so I'm willing to exchange more pay for time. And that still equals a successful formula for me. And so now that I know what I know about the actual number that it costs for me to continue my globe trotting life, to have a family, to travel with my partner, that burden of pressure has been lifted from my shoulders, right? In order to make money, I can actually do just a few one-on-ones a year and that's enough to actually make me the income that I want. And if I wanna do more, it better come from inspired action and rather than forced action. 
Now, there are two resources I would love to share with you today that I think have could change your mindset and the way you approach uh, making money, being an entrepreneur, uh, and being is like really focus on what you really need rather than being distracted about what you think you have to be to look successful or to feel successful even. Uh, the first one is by uh, a, a guy named Paul Jarvis. I followed Paul, Paul Jarvis for many years now. He wrote a book called Company of One, uh, where the entire notion of why he wrote that book is, is his message of why staying small is the next big thing for business. And I kind of wish I read this book years ago. <laughs> uh, maybe he didn't even have it published years ago, but I wish I read it before I had my burnout, basically, or before I scaled my team. Uh, and I used to be very sort of embarrassed or shameful that my business wasn't bigger, like my colleagues and my, my other partners. And I think now that I know what I know that I need in my values and the life I want to lead, staying small is absolutely a successful strategy. Being able to have less expenses, to do the work I love with smaller groups of people, um, to actually not have to build a team or anything like that is really, really pleasurable for me to do business. So that could be a book that could help jumpstart what kind of business you could be building if you were to think of solopreneurship as a company of one and designing a business that doesn't cost you your time and your energy uh, as much as a big business might. The second resource is uh, one of my favorite books of this year, uh, which is by Greg McCown. It's called Essentialism. Uh, and it's such a great book uh, and a message for how we conduct our life and in our, in, and in our business. Uh, and Greg says in the book, uh, and this is such a great paragraph, and it really just pinpoints exactly what you'll be learning in the book. Um, he says, only once you give yourself permission to stop trying to do it all, to stop saying yes to everyone, can you then make your highest contribution towards the things that really matter? And so that book has really opened my eyes on my decision-making processes, uh, where I need to work harder on my perfectionism and the need to, uh, the scarcity mentality, if you will, to do more things, to feel like I could have more, rather than actually take less things off, uh, more things off my plate and do less and actually achieve a lot more uh, and in a way that feels healthy uh, and not burning out. So I know this is a longer video than usual, but I think it was uh, this message is a big one that I love sharing and that I love being transparent about in my own journey as well. So if you've enjoyed this video and this has sort of resonated with you in a place where you too are kind of sick of the hustle train, you want to get off that train, you want to do something that's a bit more authentic in the way that you want to build your work and you want to live your life, I would love for you to comment below this video to tell me what you believe your version of success is in your business. What are some non-negotiable ingredients you have to have in your life and your work? And what do you think is sort of the one thing keeping you stuck from getting there? And how can you take that sort of essentialism, if you will, the Greg McCowan way to really focus on what matters in your work and your business? And are you potentially kind of excited to build a company of one like Paul Jarvis, right? Something that staying small and staying connected with your work instead of building and scaling bigger than you can control, does that feel like something that is much more in alignment with the business that you want to build? Maybe it is. I'm a bit of a minimalist and I love the idea of a bit of a company of one. So I would love to hear your feedback on what you took from this video and what changes you might want to make in the way that you conduct your business to get that life that you want instead of just uh, being busy all the time as well. Thank you so much for giving me your time today as usual. And um, I'll be back here every single week producing videos for you. Now, of course, um, everything that I do is for you. So you can tell me uh, what you would love for me to teach more on in my channel. Uh, is there a question or a burning question inside of you that you would love to ask me? And I would love to be able to produce a video for you and dedicate it to you as well. Thank you so very much for joining me. Um, I hope you join me again next week. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video if you loved it. Uh, and I'll see you again. Thank you. Bye.